Hey VC, what's up? Um, so I'm finally back with the Vinyl Finds video. It's been too long as always, and this time I think I have a good reason. Um, I just started another new job, um, quit my one I just got a month ago, and uh, now I'm at a new one. So that was a little crazy and full time now, and my days off are gonna be on um, Saturdays and Sundays. So now it's Sunday. Um, I don't know when you're watching this, but for me it's Sunday morning, and um, Right now we're listening to this uh, Buzzcock CD. Um, obviously, you know Pete Shelley just passed away, um, which is sad. But you know he he had a pretty eventful life. Um, and as far as like Buzzcock's physical media, this is the only thing that I own. Um, not able to find. Occasionally, I'll see um, singles going steady. That comp. Um, at, for like forty dollars at a record show, but other than that, I don't see any other stuff around here. Um, so yeah, anyway, that's just my local thing. Anyway, just good music, always great. Um, so yeah, Vinyl Finds. This is all from November. Um, kind of more than I was expecting to get in the month of November. Um, some good stuff. Oh, well, actually, this first one isn't from November. It's from uh, um, October. You know, that's the month before November. Uh, I just totally forgot to show it in my last video for whatever reason. Um, it's it's actually really cool. It's the uh, MC5 Total Assault box set. Box set. Um, it's, uh, you know, their whole studio discography, three albums. Um, it's got Kick Out the Jams, Back in the USA, and High Time. And a pretty neat little box. Uh, pretty standard fare. This is the only kind of um, extra insert it has. It has like a single page um, deal with some some liner notes from uh, Jan Uliski. I don't know how to say that name, but they're the uh, founding editor slash writer from Cream Magazine. Did a little write up about the MC5. Um, so yeah, the MC5 is pretty well known in the VC at least. Um, Especially this album, Kick Out the Jams. Um, you know, it's the uncensored audio, which is great. My copy had the uh, censorship in it. Um, so I knew that one very well. Oh, and these are all on colored vinyl. It's like a red, white, and blue thing. So Kick Out the Jams, you know, is on red. Um, fittingly, Back in the USA, which is probably my least favorite out of the three for some reason. Um, I'm not positive why. I think it might be because. Um, it's a lot of like rock and roll standards and that kind of thing, which are all well and good, but um, I kind of like their originals a lot more. And I probably, I had never listened to this all the way through High Time. This one is, um, it might actually be my favorite now. It's pretty, pretty great. It's like psychedelic and garage proto punk. You know, that's kind of what the MC5 are known for, but this is probably um, the best. Um, example of that that I've heard anyway, at least on their studio recordings. Um, and this one's on blue just to uh, complete the trifecta. But yeah, they sound pretty good. Um, it was advertised, I think, as being on 180 gram vinyl, which it doesn't really feel like. Not that that um, was a huge selling point for me. But um, still, you know, I thought it was a little interesting how they made such a big point of that in all the advertisements. and. Um, and everything and then I don't even think it's close to 180 grams um, anyway again not a huge deal um, I got a semi decent good deal on this um, I think it retails for like 55 or 60 and I believe I paid 45 for it so you know that's about how much you would pay for like a um, I don't know what I'm saying. It's it, they're basically just the the modern Rhino reissues, and this was put out by Rhino, I believe. Yeah, um, they're the modern Rhino uh, masters uh, or mix or whatever um, put out in a box set form, all three colored vinyl. Just really cool to have. Really glad I got that. Okay, so I got that out of the way. Now I'm into the stuff I actually got this month. A um, couple new things actually. I don't. I haven't been showing new stuff as, as often as I used to on my channel, um, but I'll start with one that's pretty well known <laughs> in general. This is uh, Kids See Ghosts, um, self-titled. So Kids See Ghosts, um, 
two very well-known hip-hop artists, Kanye West and um, Kid Cudi. Um, Kid Cudi, you know, he's he's more of a guitar player. Um, he has some, like, psychedelic tendencies. He's not, like, a um, virtuoso or anything like that. But he's, you know, he, he has his own unique style. I think that's cool. But the style of this record, I think, is really fantastic, actually. Um, because it's a little more... Um, industrial is not the, the right word, but it's like heavy and it's very guitar oriented and it's It's still got like the hip-hop tendencies. It's just like a really cool mix of sounds um, And I, I went out and got it because this was only like 13 or 14 dollars like super super cheap for a modern pressing uh, Single LP it's only got um, seven tracks, but it, you know, it's about I think it's about half an hour long So it is full length um, Standard black vinyl, nothing really too fancy about this at all. Um, but again, really cheap, had to get it at that price. And I think this may be up for a couple Grammys now, I'm not sure. But give it a listen if you if you haven't yet, or give it a try. I'd probably recommend the track. Um, uh, probably Free, the fourth track. Um, that's probably the one I think I would go to, to get the general sound of the record. But... Um, if anyone knows anything kind of similar to this, um, let me know, because that would be really awesome to find. Okay, next one. Um, this finally came. I had pre-ordered this probably back, um, definitely at least um, in the summer, is when they announced this on Bandcamp. But um, this is Illuminati Hotties. Um, Kiss Your Frenemies is what it's called. Um, this uh, was put out by Tiny Engines, and I got the color, I think it was advertised as like clear with like lavender haze. I don't know how well that comes through. It definitely is clear, and it's got maybe like a slight purple hue to it. Um, I was hoping for maybe like a little more lavender, honestly. Again, not super picky about the color. Uh, the music is solid. Um, 2018, in my opinion, is kind of the year of, um, like, female-fronted indie rock for, um, female singer-songwriters. Um, lots of great, fantastic music in this genre put up by, uh, women, um, who, uh, you know, just making really solid music. Again, if you like that kind of indie rock thing, maybe slightly punk leanings, like, kind of emo light sound then uh, give this a shot, Illuminati Hotties. Um, so this is actually my fiance's record. It's the uh, Mondo release for the soundtrack to the documentary, Won't You Be My Neighbor. Um, Mondo always does a really great job with the packaging. Um, the vinyl pressings are always decent. And this was a really great soundtrack. Um, I was slightly disappointed because I don't think this has the entire soundtrack on it. Um, I, think, I think I might be missing a few tracks, but it's got some uh, uh, Fred Rogers originals, like, it's such a good feeling, um, obviously the Won't You Be My Neighbor song, the theme song to, um, uh, Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood, um, yeah, really fantastic record, um, and a fantastic documentary as well, it's probably my favorite thing I saw in the theater this year, and this record is on this cool, uh, I believe it was red, yeah, red vinyl, solid red, um, Nice gatefold packaging, uh, insert, you know, there's the gatefold, kind of a behind the scenes shot of the set, here's the insert with Fred and um, Daniel the puppet, um, another fun photo, yeah, just a really touching, great documentary, soundtrack is really solid, um, it's by Jonathan Kirksky, I think that's how you say his name. It's, um, a lot of it's pretty moody, um, maybe atmospheric, some ambient, some like neoclassical, mostly piano oriented, but there's lots of strings and orchestral, um, uh, instrumentation as well. Highly recommend that documentary, definitely. Um, so I picked up the mod, the new, I think this is the newest repressing of this album, uh, Safe as Milk, Captain B Part and his Magic Band, um, yeah, this was 2018 from a Sundays. Let me take it out. It's the uh, pressing that's on. 
colored vinyl, you know, colored white, and they reproduce those um, original Buddha Records labels. That's upside down, you know. Um, which you never see originals of these. And when you do, they're like over the moon expensive. Um, fun little insert. I don't know if this was in original copies or not. Um, this one out actually opens up. Got some cool liner notes. And it comes with a bumper sticker. Save as milk. So, um, yeah, I really got into Safe as Milk this year. Um, I had always, you know, my only um, exposure to Captain Beefheart was always Trap Mask Replica. Everyone always constantly talks about that record and how weird it is. And it is a weird record, so I just kind of assumed that all his music was like that. Um, but then, I think it's mentioned in uh, High Fidelity, someone was looking for a, like a version of this record. And then, um, I think that was the first time I'd heard of it. And then I think, um, I believe it was Andrew, Tales from the Crate, talking about this record, highly recommending it. So I gave it a shot, and yeah, it's really cool. It's that great 60s, um, sort of bluesy R&B sound. Um, and uh, I think his name is Don Van Villet. I don't know how, but that's Captain Beefheart. He, he has really interesting vocals, great style. Um, and yeah, kind of like a white boy blues kind of vocal style with a cool um, 60s garage or uh, blues rock kind of sound. Um, really awesome. Really enjoy that record. Um, so I was really excited to find this one actually. Um, I'm trying to fill all the holes in my Beach Boys collection. Um, so I found an original of Friends. I never see this one, it, and it's never expensive. Um, I think I paid like four dollars for this. Um, it's an original on the Rainbow Capital label. I'll pull it out. There you go. Uh, the vinyl, I'll admit, was just okay. The cover's also pretty solid. Nothing really too wrong with the cover. Um, but the music, um, so this is, everything you read about this online is, it's, um, it's got kind of the first instances of Dennis Wilson contributing songs, um, coming more to the forefront of the, the sound of the group. Um, there's actually a track on here called Be Still, which is super spiritual, um, super quiet. I think it's just him on vocals, Dennis Wilson, um, with, I think, Brian on keyboards. Um, he also writes the track Little Bird, um, and he has a lot of uh, co-writer uh, credits on here as well. Um, overall, not the best Beach Boys record. Um, it's still got that cool, um, you know, late 60s psychedelic sound, but it's you know, still in that kind of smiley smile era, lo-fi, low-budget, home studio kind of sound. Um, I think that does kind of drag it down in some instances here. Like I think if they had a higher budget, the closer track, um, Transcendental Meditation, could have been a lot better. Um, it does, like, it's got horns and stuff. It sounds a little kind of artificial. Um, so I don't know if they were using like synthesized um, sound or they just had like bad recording of horns or something, but I don't think it sounds very good at all. Um, but you know, overall the rest of the record, this is also not a long record at all. I think it's like 25 minutes in total. Um, but yeah, pretty, you know, 60s Beach Boys is, is at least fun to hear, and um, definitely one I need to own, so I think now, I think of uh, the later 60s records, the only one I'm missing is 2020, and then, um, yeah, I still need a lot of their earlier stuff, but, you know, filling those holes in the Beach Boys collection. Alright, here was another um, recommendation from Andrew from Tales from the Crate. Um, Free Fire and Water. Um, this is the if you're gonna see a free record in a record store or anywhere, this is probably gonna be the one because it has kind of their big hit on here. Um, all right now, um, you would totally recognize the guitar riff from that. It's all over like classic rock radio all the time. But um, this is not like a first pressing. I don't think it's. I believe it's like a slightly later pressing on this A and M label. Could be wrong. I don't really know too much about this band, honestly. Um, but pretty bluesy, pretty, um, they're really big on, uh, 
I'll say I'll say this: the songwriting was fantastic. Um, I was kind of impressed by the dynamics they were able to pull off on this. Um, you know, you have like guitar-oriented songs, and then you have like slower kind of ballads, but they're not like cheesy. They're like genuinely good ballads, and um, you know, they go from mellow to kind of energetic very well. Um, I really dug this record. Again, that was kind of a cheap find. I want to say like five bucks at High Price Books. Um, the only thing about this copy also is the top for some reason. It looks like a, it's not split, but it's like scratched all the way down. And it's only the top seam. I don't know why. It could have like scraped against something or it looks like maybe a cat scratched it. Um, so actually the rest of these are all from Half Price Books, various Half Price Books stores I visited in uh, DFW over the Thanksgiving break. Um, always happy to see Echo and the Bunnymen. I was really looking for this one because it's got probably their biggest song, uh, The Killing Moon. But, you know, the rest of the record is fantastic. Um, I think maybe the only song I wasn't crazy about was um, the second one, Nocturnal Me. But again, with um, the dynamics of this record, um, it's kind of a roller coaster of, um, you've got like, um, you know, that 80s kind of um, new wave pop sound with songs like Silver and Crystal Days. Um, and then you've got more post-punk leanings with like Nocturnal Me, Thorn of Crowns, The Killing Moon. Um, it just kind of goes back and forth between those, and I think that was really interesting. Um, again, don't know a lot about Echo and the Bunny Man, but this is like my third record from them that I own. I think I own like their self-titled and um, Crocodile. I think it's called Crocodile. It's either that or Alligator. Um, yeah, be becoming a fan super fan. Probably um, one of the better uh, groups from that 80s new wave kind of sound. Okay, so in my last finds video, I showed that I got the um, that Bill Withers uh, second record, Still Bill. Well, I found two more Bill Withers records. Um, one of them being Still Bill again. What's interesting about this one is this is a German pressing, and it doesn't have the um, fold-out cover like the gatefold, like the U.S. one has. Um, but super interesting. Uh, I I got it because it was cheap, and I wanted to see how the pressing compared. They sound about the same to my ear, so I think I'll be probably passing this one on. But interestingly, there was also his first one, a German pressing, um, just as I am, and. Um, I think this might actually be even better than that last one. I really liked the last one, but this one I think, um, I never heard the full way through. I knew the songs obviously like Ain't No Sunshine. Um, I think I'd heard Harlem before as well. I'm pretty sure I own that at 45. But um, the rest of this, even like the covers, like he does a cover of Everybody's Talking, and um, he covers Let It Be. Uh, and, but, you know, they're not just, like, the standard kind of covers. He kind of does it in his own style. I love his voice. Um, this was produced by uh, Booker T. Jones. Um, obviously from, you know, Booker T. and the MGs. And it's got a lot of the um, the stacks, like, uh, studio musicians. Like, I always recognize, uh, on bass, Donald Duck Dunn. I know he was in the Blues Brothers movie. Um, but, you know, that kind of guy, like the studio, like veterans, um, so this expert playing all over this thing, and, um, sounds great, and <laughs> it was just a fantastic record all the way through. I really like the tracks, um, like Grandma's Hands, Do It Good, um, Moanin' and Groanin', like, there was not a bad song on here, it was just like a solid, like, 9 out of 10 record. I might as well pull up the label on this as well. Um, they're both the same. They're on this, um, uh, Tan and m label with the Sussex um, logo there next to it. Um, so I think I paid like $8 total for the two of these. So I'll be keeping this one for sure. I'm not positive about the other one. Because um, I do think the fold-out cover on the US, um, US version is really cool. And they're in similar condition and they sound about the same. So I'm not sure yet. And the last two I got here, I found at the same place. Um, they were both sealed. Um, I showed them on my Instagram, but I got uh, Black Flag, My War, as well as Slip It In. Um, 
so Black Flag, obviously, really big, um, you know, punk legends, hardcore. Um, of the two, I would actually say I kind of dug um, My War better, but I really thought Slip It In, because um, I never heard this all the way through. I'd heard, like, you know, obviously the title track and, like, um, My Ghetto. Um, but there's, uh, like, the track Obliteration on here is instrumental. And I'd always kind of, um, you never hear about Black Flag's instrumental stuff. Like, I, one of the first releases I got from them was uh, The Process of Weeding Out, which is a totally instrumental EP. Um, and I kind of always underestimate how heavy they can get. You know, Black Flag, you think of, like, hardcore punk, you know, something like this. Um, and even similar on this record, but they can get super slow, um, like, a, like a nice, deliberate, moder moderate tempo. And um, just like super punchy and heavy and dark, and they can hold that for like a nine-minute song sometimes. Um, and the the guitar playing on this one is, is especially crazy. Like um, you can hear Greg Ginn's guitar playing is getting like um, more technical. He's um, you know progressing past the the, the typical like punk uh, power chords. Um, this one has Kira on bass, who I think was probably their best bass player. I think most people would probably agree with me. Um, sorry if you don't. But, um, anyway, both of these pressings are um, barcode pressings, but they were definitely older because they had, uh, the shrink wrap was like yellowed, and so I don't know. I don't know if they're like from the 80s or 90s or what, um, but they were a good deal and they were both sealed so I got them both both fantastic records okay so that's actually everything I got last month um, to me it kind of doesn't seem like a lot I'm kind of you know still pining for those days back in uh, a couple months ago where I would uh, sometimes get like 30 records a month but um, you guys know how it is with budget and you know there's more important things to spend money on obviously um, being like bills and I'm also planning a wedding at the same time uh, or trying my best to help out um, so anyway yeah I hope you guys had a great Thanksgiving if I didn't already say that um, I hope you're having a good weekend uh, congratulations to the winners of uh, Dylan's contest from Noble Records um, so those, are, those are really great entries that one and um, yeah I'm looking forward to seeing uh, you guys post more great content. So see you in the next one. Take care.